So now let's talk a little bit about research because yeah. a, a student coming through the process is going like, so this is the sum total of knowledge about accounting that I need. <clears throat> what are you researching? <laughs> What is left to research and why? Uh, uh, that's, that's, that's such a great <laughs> question. Um, the typical question I get about, you know, you know, when I say to someone I work at the university, I mean, around this time of the year, we have recess. They say, oh, so you're on holiday. <laughs> I'm like, no, why Sorry. would I be on holiday? They, well, the students are not on campus. So you're I, obviously, yeah. I was like, well, I actually lost track that it's university recess. <laughs> um, because I mean, our job is more than just um, you know getting getting students to to reach their kind of um, mm. academic and studying and and career goals. Universities are the the institutions in society one would expect um, a, you know a rigorous set of new knowledge will come out, will be interrogated pulled apart so that we get to mm. to answers that are that you know that are valid and that are reliable and um we can once again easily see this in a hard science like physical mm. science you know people mm. in labs doing those type of experiments medical mm. Mm. medical researchers we i mean we in, immediately make that that connection yeah. yeah but it's it's equally relevant to you know uh, uh accounting. The research part is also very much linked for me to the blue diagram, right? Mm. Because as accounting researcher, I'm interested to understand, given that the current standards, given what we currently have, given the, the needs of users or, you know, what we still need to find out about that, how can we make this information set better, richer, so that we can have better decision making, so that we can have a more prosperous society? Yeah. And so, Accounting research, I think, in, in key um, or in, in summary, they're kind of two main areas. Um, the one area is just looking at the aggregate decisions of users. So that would kind of looking at capital, mark, capital market consequences of accounting information. Um, another kind of very important area would be looking at the decision making of individual users. Mm -hmm. And we know the way humans process information. That's got to do with psychology. Right? Mm, mm. Um, there's a lot of, you know, kind of psychological aspects that we as accountants need to think about in presenting information. Human mm. beings have limited processing mm. capacity. Yeah. They can be, they have, they have biases. Yeah. You, you can present a perfect set of information, but if you think about someone's biases, it may not be perfect because yeah. their biases would result in them making an inferior yeah. decision. Yeah. So a really accounting research is examining these effects mm. to see how can we come up with making this this whole a whole profession better so that we can have kind of better decision making in, yeah. in general. So it's like this is what the standard says. Someone needs to be doing research on whether it actually did yeah what it's or, intended to do yeah. how do people see it are they working with it is it giving the information is this the best way to go about it how do people and yeah. then the psychology is really really interesting do you have any kind of examples of psychology elements of accounting yeah. research that you've seen that people probably wouldn't expect just to give some context or some illustration yeah i mean i think there they, they are a number one that immediately springs to to mind is the the, the concept uh, around uh you know, prospect theory. And basically what that means is that we as human beings, uh, we, we, we are averse to losses, right? We don't want to make losses. We like to make gains or profits or have good experiences mm. in life. And so when we, uh, when we kind of try to balance these two out, um, if, we, if we need to experience a loss, we would like to experience it once off immediately. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Not in Rip bits and pieces. the off quickly. Yeah. 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 Whereas if we have uh, gains, we would make, we would prefer to maybe uh, experience those over time, like right. smaller increments, because yeah. we'll then be happy. Even though just in magnitude, it's, relatively, it's exactly yeah. the same thing. Right. Yeah. Um, and so really what some of the accounting literature has, has looked at is, okay, but how does this affect investors' decision-making, for example, on things like, you know, OCI, mm. recycling things in and out, doing yeah. investors, because 
those are just like book transactions, yes, right? Yes, Moving yeah. things around. Um, and so we find that, you know, in the way, obviously, investors process these things actually does have an impact on, on, on um, you know, their willingness to invest. Um, similar with taxes, right? Mm, mm. We're going to have a tax rate increase. That's going to be a loss, yeah. right? Um, investors would prefer to take that knock once off rather than the tax rate increase Spend being over. introduced gradually even though over time it's going to be exactly the same thing. Right. Right. So if you have a, if you have a decrease in, in tax rates, that's going to be a gain. So mm. it's government would then like investors to invest more in kind of risky assets, right? Mm. That's why they decrease mm. the tax rate is to, to, uh, to spur on investment. But now governments need to think, right? Given the psychology behind human beings, now these things work, they're probably going to achieve the objective better if, if they, they stagger if they stagger the mm. decrease in the tax rate over time rather than giving it to one side. Right. Yeah. Um, so psychology has got to play Very a massive role. impact. Yeah. Yeah. And the same with um, you know, the presenting information. So mm. a big part of or let me say substantial literature is around recognition versus disclosure, right? right. Um, so mm. does it matter? whether we recognize an amount in the financial statements mm. or purely just disclosing it in the notes to the financial statement. Okay, so for example, the difference between we recognize a provision, but we disclose a contingent liability. For Correct. Example. Yeah. doesn't matter, right? Um, well, I think it matters because people who aren't accountants don't read the disclosures. Well, <laughs> don't no, no, even know they exist. Yeah, so so here's the thing, right? So so let's say it, it, let's take that that contingent liability example because I think that that's a very very good illustration, right? So obviously we know, for example, in um, IFRS three, that you know at acquisition we bring some contingent liabilities of the subsidiary into the consolidated financial statements at the acquisition date, even though in terms of IS thirty seven we not allowed to recognize. To recognize. Yeah. yeah. But does it matter whether it's recognized or not? And the research shows it does, right? Matters to who? So, the users? The investors? Yeah. So right? investors attach much greater weight to information because remember, this is just information. Yeah. Right? This is what yeah. it is. We're saying that you have a possibility of paying an amount in the future, mm. right? Mm. In the one scenario, we recognize it as a liability. In another scenario, we write a piece of That's the same number. The same information. Same number, same level of possibility, same everything. But yeah. Human beings have decided we're going to treat this separately, <laughs> right? Yeah. Now the question doesn't matter. It matters, right? Investors attach greater weight to recognize the amounts than to disclose the amounts. Hmm. So that's, for example, where I think a big part, if we look at share based payments, IFRS 2, um, previously that was within IS 19 on employee hmm. benefits hmm. many moons ago when, when I was still studying. <laughs> Share-based payments were not recognized. They were disclosed. Mm. There were no expense recognition for them, right? And, but we know that, right, these are serious remuneration benefits for employees. And we know from the recognition and disclosure literature, it matters, right? If right. we're going to recognize that expense, investors are going to pay more attention yeah. to this than just having the narrative in the note. Mm. Um, mm. So, yeah, that's... All these interesting things, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think they're fascinating, but I think you know, it's it's if I think of my like you know, my my entire qualification process, these are not considerations that, and this is why I want to have this discussion with you because these are not considerations that are ever discussed or brought up or you know when you talk about. But wait a minute, human beings have a certain psychology, and it's human beings that are creating the standards, human beings that are using the standards, human beings that are learning, interpreting. Um, all of the stuff, it's it does become a lot more fascinating, but it, it wasn't really a world that I understood I knew existed, you know, until much, much yep. later. Um yep. so so given that, so the, the scope of the possibility of, of all of this stuff, do you think more accountants should consider going into some kind of research, even if they're not necessarily going to I mean, even then, they're not going to be academics, let's say, you know, you've got yeah. a chartered accountant yeah. who's going to stay in commerce or stay in corporate or whatever, or, or in practice. Who would you kind of recommend take a look at the idea of, of, of doing research and why? 
would it be a good thing for them to, to put on their radar? All right, that's a great question, but I need a sip of coffee now. <laughs> <laughs> good plan. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that that I mean that that is it's it really is an excellent question. Um, I, I think when so, I think we need to to really talk about the concept of research, right? Yeah, because I think there's also a, a lot of misunderstanding about what research is, right? We've seen this during the pandemic on social media, right, where people yes. say to each other, "Go and do your research," i.e., right? go look at Facebook. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to go into a lab and test medicine? <laughs> because that's <laughs> well, what, what research is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, at a very basic level, research is, a, you know, kind of a very structured process to find a solution for a problem, right? And, uh, you know, I always say to my, my, my students, my master's students, when we talk about this, I say, that sounds a little bit like auditing, right? <laughs> I mean, auditing <laughs> is yeah. also a very structured yeah. process to find evidence or a solution yeah. for a problem you need to give an audit opinion on whether the financial statement is a fair reflection well you're going to gather <laughs> very structured way you're going to gather evidence yeah. about that to be able yeah. to make that inference yeah and that's what we do in research right yeah we have a problem we gather evidence so that we can say something about the problem right at a very basic level yeah um the 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 kind of the scientific method and the academic process to make that mm -hmm. is extremely rigorous, right? Because we want our inferences when we say something, we want it to be able yeah. to stand up. Yeah. Um, right. So it goes through, you know, a massive process of, you know, just pulling it all together. Then there's mm -hmm. the whole peer review process, people mm -hmm. giving you feedback, challenging you. So by the end that something, you know, gets published in a reputable journal, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it kind of stands up. Yeah. But so who's this useful for? N not only academics. Um, you know, I, I look at the psychocompetency framework and one of the things is critical thinking. Uh, you know, going through the mm. thinking of a research project, it doesn't have to be a massive mm. thing, but going through that to say, mm. I've asked the question, I've identified a problem, mm. I followed a very systematic process to gather evidence on it. And based on that evidence, I can make a conclusion. Mm. That's a useful skill for any human being. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, I always say, <laughs> since I've become a researcher, um, I've learned very quickly that my social interactions outside of work, I can overcomplicate them because you should not use these skills around a barbecue or braai. Um, oh. And suddenly it becomes very, very hard for you to listen to politicians. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Because yeah. because you hear you hear the inferences or the things they say, and then you say you can't say that, right? <laughs> you don't have the evidence to back that back statement. That yeah. Um, or the evidence that you've just provided, you stretch yeah. in your inference. Yeah. So this research teaches you critical thinking, you know, yeah. in a very practical yeah. way. 